Next, we're going to talk about some research from Dr. Carol Dweck's laboratory that was really the seed of the entire field of growth mindset. It relates to a specific set of experiments that really show that the sorts of feedback that we get, especially early in life or early in an endeavor, get integrated into our core beliefs about what we think is possible for us in a given endeavor. And the great news is we can also modify those core beliefs simply by changing the feedback that we give ourselves. The research paper I'd like to discuss briefly that beautifully embodies the runway that led to the discovery of growth mindset is a paper from Dr. Carol Dweck, as well as her colleague, uh, Claudia Mueller. And the title of the paper essentially says it all. The title is Praise for Intelligence Can Undermine Children's Motivation and Performance. Right? That should be surprising, that praise for intelligence can undermine motivation and performance. I would have thought, and I think many people probably believe, that if you tell a child or an adult that they're really good at something and you're genuine about that feedback, meaning they're performing well and you say, great, you're doing really well, you're so smart, you're so talented, that their performance would continue to improve, that it would bolster their motivation to engage in that activity, which hopefully they enjoy, but regardless, provided that it's a safe activity, it's educational or what have you, that it would serve to encourage them, right? It does not. In fact, the exact opposite happens. So I'll just give you a few of the key takeaways from this study. The way it was done is very interesting. They essentially gave feedback about performance that was linked up with a child's intelligence, telling a kid they're smart, they're talented, that they can learn things really easily. And they called that intelligence feedback. Or they gave them what was called effort feedback. The simple way to think about effort feedback is that it's more attached to verbs as opposed to labels. So effort feedback consists of things like, you tried really hard on that problem. It was great the way that you applied effort. It was great the way that you persisted. It was great the way that even when you got the wrong answer, you spent 10 minutes thinking about it and then you tried again and again. Or in some cases, even if they didn't get the right answer, telling them, well, even though you didn't get the right answer, it's really terrific that you continue to try. So in this study, which included over 100 children, they either got the intelligence type feedback or the effort type feedback, or there was a control group that didn't get either the intelligence or the effort type feedback. First of all, the kids that got the intelligence-based feedback, when they were then later offered problem sets that were either challenging or were of the sort that they knew they could perform well on, they tended to select problems that they knew they could perform well on. These were what were referred to as performance goals. In other words, they picked problems that allowed them to continue to get the praise that they had received previously about being smart or talented. Whereas the kids that got feedback about their strong effort, when later presented with problems that were either easy or hard, more often than not, they picked the harder problems that stood to teach them more. So that's striking. It says that if you tell a kid that they're smart or talented, and that's the reason why they perform well, when they encounter challenges, they are likely to go with the least amount of challenge so that they can continue to receive that praise or feedback. Whereas if you receive praise and feedback for your strong effort, then later you tend to pick environments, problem sets, et cetera, that allow you to exert the very effort that got you the praise in the first place. So in both cases, these children are essentially attached to the praise, right? In some sense. I mean, we like to think that they enjoy these activities and they're benefiting from them as well. But in both cases, the praise really serves to reinforce a certain pattern of behavior. But in the case of giving intelligence feedback, the kids are really just trying to reinforce being told that they're smart or talented, as opposed to reinforcing the engagement in the activity that got them the praise in the first place. And the converse is also true. When kids are told, hey, you really tried hard and that's great, or I like how you persisted, or you're so persistent, I can really see how persistent you are in trying to get the right answer, even if you don't get the right answer. Well, then when you present those kids with additional challenges, they work very hard to stay in challenge. And guess what? No surprise. The kids that are rewarded for effort and that continue to pick harder problems outperform the kids that are given the intelligence praise and feedback by a large margin. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the narratives that we hear from others, of course, reinforce certain patterns of behavior. What else does this tell us? This tells us that if you're a parent or teacher, you have to be very careful 
about giving feedback to a child that is attached to their identity around an endeavor, especially if they're performing well at that endeavor, right? Now, of course, if a child is not performing well at something, you also don't want to tell them that they're stupid, right? You don't want to tell them that they're deficient, right? But that's a rare occurrence in the classroom, one would hope. That's a rare occurrence on the field, one would hope. But what's very common very, very common is that when we see children or adults performing well, we tend to give them identity labels as a way to try and reinforce whatever behavior we observe and we like.